So in this video, we're going to look at just updating a virtualized application. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about it's very complicated to do, very hard. So just thought it'd be easy to walk through updating an app. Now I'm actually going to update Office 2010, which is actually one of the more complicated apps to update. Um, and so the first thing I do is obviously I reset my sequencing VM back to its clean state. No apps installed on it. Uh, via the normal best practices, I'm going to start that up. Meanwhile, what I've done is I'm applying updates to a package. So well, I could use Windows Update and just do scan, but we don't really want to do that. It may make other changes to the OS. So what I actually do is I leverage the update catalog. I'm just searching for Office 2010. I link them by date. And here you can see I'm downloading all the 32-bit updates for the month of June. The others are already in my package. So I select those updates I want, the 32-bit additions. And I can view my basket and I'll see those updates in it. So now I can download, I specify a folder and it will download basically a little cabinet file with all those updates in it. Now I've already done that. So it creates a folder for each update and in there it has that cabinet file. So what we want to do is open that up and extract the files from that into like a, a single root folder. Which again you can see I've already done for those three updates. I have the files that make up those updates. And then what I actually did is I copied those up to a, a network location, just my NAS device, so I can access it later on. So there they are. So that sequence is now up and running, so I'm going to connect into that sequencer box. So this isn't part of the domain, it's just a local account. Again, minimizing any external changes happening to it. And now because it's Office, obviously there's a few things I need to do in advance to, to prep it. Now I need to pull down the existing sequenced application. Now if I'm gonna update it, I need to have that original sequenced app first. I'm gonna copy that down from my main library where I keep all my sequenced applications. Because for Office, I actually keep a, a special version of it. So go to library. Actually, what I'll do first is because it is Office, I need to install the App V Office Deployment Kit. This basically sets up the components that it integrate with the operating system um, and handle activation. So I'm going to install that first. Again, this is unique to Office, but because I am updating the Office application, I need that Office Deployment Kit installed. And then I can go ahead, copy down the Office 2010 sequence application. Now I keep a special version of Office 2010 on my network because essentially what this version has, this has all of the MSO cache, the Windows installer files, which I don't need on the actual clients. So as we we'll actually see here, Office 2010 is a great example because not only do we update the app, but then actually open up and edit the sequence application and remove things like the MSO cache and the Windows installer files from the version we deploy to clients because it just adds like a gigabyte of disk space that we just don't need. So I have that copied down. Notice that's 1.8 gigabytes. So it's pretty big because basically everything's doubled because it has that MSO cache for the installer files if you want to do an update. So obviously I need that version with MSO cache for when I want to update the application, but the version I deployed to clients, I just don't need. So I'm going to modify an existing app. I'm going to do an upgrade. I select that application package. It's the one I copied to my desktop. Open up the project file. 
So then I'm going to load all that in, so it takes a while, so I'm going to sort of skip through some of this, but I'm just going to get ready and get where my updates are. Just ready there. And then we'll fast forward time a little bit. So all done. Magic of editing. Now notice it's doing a quick check. It's saying you don't want Defender. I don't want anything that could muck around with the computer while this is running. Now notice it's complaining about Windows Search. Now in the version I virtualized, I don't really focus too much on the search integration. So I'm going to disable it. But if you were relying on the search integration with Office 2010, which is one of the features we get with the Active Deployment Kit, you wouldn't have to disable search in that instance. I'm doing it just because I don't use that feature the way I've got it deployed. But if that was something you were using, obviously you wouldn't necessarily follow that guidance. Again, it's just warning you that, hey, if you have things running that may mess around with the system, it may change what gets put into the virtualized application. If I make those changes, it advises. And I have to do a refresh, but I've done that. So at this point, if it was a particular installer to update, I could select it. But all I want to do is actually run some updates. So I'm going to perform a custom installation. It's going through a quick check. And it's now going to give me an option to say, hey, do you select the updates you want to run. I, I don't have to do that. And you'll see it in a second. All that lets you do is if you select updates to run through its interface, the sequencer is already running in sort of administrator privileged credentials. So you won't get UAC prompts if you use this run option here. But to be honest, I find it a pain in the neck. Notice it's also reminded me in the bottom corner, if I'm installing anything, make sure I install it to the Q drive, which is the, the virtual file system for app V. So in this case, I'm just going to run the patches normally. Exactly the same thing happens. It just means I'm going to get UAC prompts. But I can live with that. So I'm going to go through, install the update. It's running the checks. Again, I'll get that UAC update. Yep, apply it, and it's going to go through and apply that Excel focus change. And again, that takes a little bit of time. And again, the actual time all these changes will take is really going to depend on your specification of your sequencer and the size of the update, obviously. So Office is a huge package. So it takes a long time to load in, more time to sort of update. If it was a small application like Adobe Reader or something, it's going to be obviously much faster. Now, if you even bother updating Adobe Reader or just create a new version, that's going to depend on your sort of philosophy of updates. So now I just apply the other updates. Let that run through.
now we're finished and it's going to go through and basically look for all the things that changed it's going to give me a report of what it collected if there were issues Won't worry about those. Now we can run the applications now to optimize. And so this is basically creating that information so it knows what it needs to stream down to initially launch the application and then what's like the extra bits if we're actually using streaming to deliver these applications. It basically makes it run faster. So I could do run all there. Uh, I'm going to skip that just for time. But yeah, I would run all to actually optimize the package so it knows which bits it needs. So I can save it, now it's had the option to compress. So now it's completed. And now what I want to do is obviously save away this updated version of the application because this has now got the updates applied. It's got the MSO cache still because it's the, my sort of saved copy that I bought from my network share. It has my MSO cache, the sort of the Windows installer files, everything I need if I wanted to update it again in the future. And we'll actually notice we now have a version 3 before it was a version 2. So I'm now just going to copy that back up. kill off that old version of the v2. But obviously we can see there that doing the update it increased that version. So now because this is Office I actually want to do something a little bit special. Do you remember I talked about that? Now I'm actually going to do it instead of upgrading updating I'm just going to edit it directly. So I'm just going to select the package name. Because Office does something fairly unique. It keeps all of the installation files in that MSO cache folder and it also has like a Windows installer for any updates so it has a lot of extra information that I just don't need for normal clients so again I'm skipping forward time a little bit here I just don't need that information in there because I'm never going to update the application when it's running on a client because it's virtualized uh, I'm not going to apply patches to it on a client so I can basically reduce the size of my package by half by just removing those two folders. So now this is the other way I can modify a virtualized app, which you won't do for most apps. But again, Office 2010 is kind of like the worst case scenario, so it's, it's a good one to demo with. And you can see here, I can actually go through and I can look. I can look at the files, the virtual registry, virtual file system, virtual services, the OSD content that describes the virtual application. And the files is what really sort of makes up that, the Q drive content. And I want sort of this virtual file system. And we can see here, I'm going to shrink all this down, and I want to focus on the Windows folder. And we see under there, under here, there's installer. I'm going to delete this in a second. Don't need any of that. But also, we're going to see here, the mount folder is MSO cache. So what I'm just going to do is just kill this. So I'm going to delete that entire MSO folder, the MSO cache, because like again, that's all the installer files for Office. Don't need them. And then I'm going to go and delete that. 
the Windows installer. Don't need that either. And you actually see how much smaller it makes my package. And I can save it. And you notice the size, look at that, it's now 832 megs. And I've increased my version again. And now that, this time I'm going to copy this up to my app v server. And again, I'm going to go and actually delete the old version. So notice that's a version 3. And you may think, well, that's small as well, because I did the same thing for my last update. I originally had, obviously, a V1 iPad updates to make a V2. That V2 had the MSO cache and everything else. So I then saved away that V2, which is one I took at the start of this, took away MSO cache installer and updated it to App V. And then this time, I took that V2, upgraded it to V3, and then took away MSO cache to make that V4. So now it's there. And then literally, I just go into the app V server, and I could do one or two things here. And this is really gonna depend on the application. I can actually create a new version of the app altogether and publish that out and sort of retire the old version. Really depends on what you wanna do. Or, as I'll sort of show you in this example, I can just actually select in the package to upgrade to a new version. So notice it's got the version two, the version three, and now I'm just gonna say add a version and set the version four. And then the clients next time they connect will get that new version. And it's literally, that's how easy it is to update an app. And I'm done. Hope that was useful. Uh, good luck with your app V packaging.